Your brain has a series of distinctive brainwave patterns that can be observed by an electroencephalogram. While you sleep, these brainwaves will pass through a series of patterns, and then these then repeat around every 90 minutes. But what do these patterns actually mean about what's happening in your brain? In this episode of Psych Boost, the stages of sleep or tradium rhythms. So far we've discussed the 24-hour circadian rhythm, known as the sleep-wake cycle, and the 28-day infradium rhythm, the menstrual cycle. In this video we'll explore the ultradium rhythm, the stages of sleep. Be sure to remember that a circadian rhythm repeats around once a day, infradian is less frequent than every day, and ultradian is more frequent than every day. Remember that infradian is infrequent should help get them the right way around. When describing brain waves shown by EEG, the frequency is the number of waves per second and the amplitude is the size of the wave. The five main distinctive patterns are delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. As sleep becomes deeper, slower patterns like theta and then delta dominate. There are four distinct stages of sleep. The first three stages are non-REM sleep, or NREM, and these are known as N1, N2, and N3. The other stage of sleep is REM, or rapid eye movement sleep. REM being the stage in which you dream. The entire cycle takes around 90 minutes and repeats four to five times over the course of a night's sleep. Progressing from M1 to N3 sleep, we can describe as moving from a light sleep to a deeper and deeper sleep. You're less easily woken and the brainwave patterns slow to a lower frequency but with a higher amplitude. N1 is a sensation of moving from awake to asleep. You're easy to wake and the body can move suddenly. These are called hypnic jerks. There may be a sensation of falling, or even mild auditory or visual hallucinations called hypnagogic hallucinations. This stage can be identified on the EEG by the presence of theta waves, waves that are slower in frequency but greater in amplitude than wakefulness. N2 is deeper sleep. You're less easy to wake and the body relaxes. Heart rate and body temperature falls and the eyes are still. This stage can be identified on the EEG by slowing of brain waves, but occasional bursts of activity called sleep spindles and K complexes. N3 is the deeper sleep. You're hard to wake and the body is fully relaxed. Heart rate and body temperature falls and the eyes are still. This stage is known as slow wave sleep and can be identified on the EEG by slow frequency but high amplitude waves called delta waves. In REM sleep, your brain returns to an active state similar to wakefulness as seen on the EEG, but the body is paralysed. Because of this, REM sleep is also known as paradoxical sleep. Physically, REM sleep is characterised by rapid eye movement, given REM its name. REM is associated with dreaming, as if you wake someone in this stage of sleep, they will describe vivid dreams. That's one cycle of sleep. Your brain will now transition back to N1 and repeat the cycle. Each cycle tends to include a larger proportion of REM sleep compared to NREM sleep. But over the course of one night's sleep, humans will usually have between four and five full cycles. Research evaluation. Dermot and Kleitman published two studies in 1957. One with 33 adults showed clearly using EEG recordings that there are regular sleep cycles over the course of a night's sleep. Showing the process I've just described, with peaks of brain activity at the same time as rapid eye movement. The second paper with nine participants demonstrated REM sleep was associated with dreaming by showing when woken at different stages, recall of dreams was the most vivid when woken in the REM stage. Research by Shapiro in 1981 showed that intense physical activity by ultramarathon runners resulted in longer sleep and increased proportion of slow wave sleep indicating sleep, and in particular slow wave sleep and free, is for physical recovery of the body. The function of RAM is debated by psychologists. Many suggesting RAM has a role in memory consolidation. However, research by Haider in 1970 suggests RAM sleep is for brain recovery. As this research showed that an extended period of RAM sleep for 10 patients whose brains were recovering from overdose. Evaluations. Newborn babies have about 80% of their night's sleep in REM, compared to 20 to 25% in adults. This suggests that while the overall pattern of stages is consistent, 
it adapts to the developmental needs of the individual. An understanding of the stages of sleep is leading to the development of technology and devices that can help individuals track and improve their own sleep. For example, if working in stage four, people feel groggy and disorientated. Avoiding this could lead to a happier, healthier and more productive population. Our understanding of the sleep cycle is continuing to adapt with the development of more sophisticated EEGs and other techniques. In 2007, the old stages three and four sleep were combined into the new N3 stage. Circadian and ultradian rhythms seem to be connected and perhaps shouldn't be seen as separate processes. Ciesler in 1980 showed that the longest period of REM sleep coincides with the lowest point in the circadian body temperature cycle. This could mean that both processes use the same internal body clock known as the endogenous pacemaker. Bonus fact. There is another biological ultradian rhythm that coincides with REM sleep. In this stage of sleep, a process called nocturnal penile tumescence takes place in all men. Simply put, this means that men develop an erection during the night and in the morning. In fact, five times a night, right in time with their periods of REM sleep. Some endocrinologists think that the reason for NPT is to help with penile health by providing a fresh supply of oxygenated blood, avoiding damage. I hope you found this psych boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you with your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help psych boost grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.